Uh, and let's start with my boy AJ Brown out in Tennessee. I've been waiting uh, for that. Come on, man. Let, we're talking second year receivers, Titans guy. Let's do this thing. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, so talk me off the ledge and tell me why AJ Brown isn't going to be a complete bust in 2020. Well, I mean, I think the skill set, the skill sets there, right? You know, that's yes. that's the number one thing. I think for fantasy, or let's just talk about the negatives at first. Like for his fantasy outlook, obviously, I think there's reasonable question about the passing volume overall in Tennessee. That, that's certainly, I think, questionable. Mate, you're definitely looking at some regression for Ryan Tannehill just from a pure statistical perspective. I think Tannehill's still going to be a good starting quarterback because I think what you saw from him just when you purely watch him play was that this was a guy who was really letting it rip. He was free to make plays down the field much more than Marcus Mariota was. I mean, just it was an immediate, and I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, man, but like it was an immediate just shot in the arm watching a guy who wasn't Marcus Mariota play in this offense just because he would do the two things that it felt like Mariota was so afraid to do, which was number one, like I said, just let it rip downfield and use your legs, man. It was it just seemed like the last couple of seasons Mariota just completely fell apart from an improvisational standpoint. And when you're that athletic, it's it's problematic when you can't when you haven't developed to the point that you're not going to take chances downfield and you're not going to take chances with your legs. We don't need to relitigate that case, but <laughs> I don't think I don't think that Mariota. I mean, I don't think that Ryan Tannehill is going to completely fall apart as a passer. But it's just the overall passing volume that's a question. But what's not in question is that AJ Brown is a freaking stud, man. Mm -hmm. And the real the real thing that was the most impressive part of him as a rookie was that I think you know maybe you guys fell into the same boat. I know I definitely did, and others. We all expected him to be a good player, I think. You know, I, I thought he was one of the top two receivers in last year's draft class, right up there with Marquise Brown. But the th I projected him at least early in his career to be a big slot receiver. Like he would be a guy who played inside. You know, maybe he would be. I know a lot of people, I didn't compare him to this player, but I know a lot of people compared him to like Juju Smith Schuster as a guy that you can you can use exclusively inside and make plays after the catch over the middle of the field. But that was not what AJ Brown did. He was in his reception perception sample. He was outside and on the line of scrimmage on over 85% of his sampled snaps. That's what you're out, there, you're out there playing X receiver, big time football, facing number one corners, press coverage routinely. And he dominated in that role on short routes, intermediate routes. We know he made big plays down the field and after the catch. Like he's Anquan Bolden from a physical perspective because he plays the game like such a bully, but he's a more like juiced up version of Anquan Bolden, at least. The Anquan Bolden, I think that we all remember with like the Ravens and 49ers or whatever. Mm -hmm. But so I don't think that we need to put limits on this player from a purely individual standpoint. I do think it's worth questioning if he can get the overall volume that he'll need to pay back his cost in fantasy. But sometimes talent does create opportunity. And if that is the case in Tennessee, this player does have the talent to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, I was just looking at his pure like production from last year. This is a guy that scored uh, basically 2.28 fantasy points per target. That was something that was a way outlier for anybody inside, you know, the top 30. He was he's that that's kind of a, a per target rate of guys that see 50 targets, not guys that see you know close to 100. Uh, obviously, um, as we talked about the Titans offense, that's just not what they do now. If you're saying Tannehill, we saw steps at, when he was just kind of put in place. Now he's got a whole offseason to, to tweak the offense a little bit more in his direction. They get Darrington Evans, which is a running back that I love, um, of super versatile, can obviously, uh, you know, we have Derrick Henry and they're going to run the crap out of him. But if they can pass a little bit more, open up the offense just a little bit more, um, I would be more excited about A.J. Brown and, and his potential. But if you like, take his fantasy points per target down to two points a game or down to two, uh, two points per target, uh, which is, you know, still pretty sizable amount above the, the guys that we are looking at in kind of the top 20 ish range. He, he would have scored basically uh, a top 30 season instead of a top 15 season. Um, you know, in any of your aggressive, even a little bit more then you're looking at, you know, a guy who's probably third, top 30, top 40. So, Something has to change in order for AJ Brown to pay off that price tag. And I think it's really, I think it's totally possible that it does because it, the rest of the Titans receiver core pass catchers, I'm high on Johnny Smith. That's another player that I keep finding mm -hmm. myself drafting outside of like the top 10 tight ends that I think could be a top 12 tight end or whatever. But 
Look, Corey Davis, I mean, I think Corey Davis has become a fine, okay starting NFL receiver, but that is it. Uh, Adam Humphreys is a Jag slot receiver, and you're just not getting excited about much else there. Brown, could this could really be just – I could see this being a classic fantasy community situation where we have, like, the numbers right from, from that perspective. You know, like you said, you regressed the, the yards per target, fantasy points per target down a little bit, but – what if he does see 115, 120 yeah. targets? I think that's totally possible if the Titans aren't playing that run the ball football script as much as they might, as much as they might want to be, or as much as they were last year. I think that's totally possible. So I think AJ Brown could just be, like I said, one of those players where the talent creates more opportunity mm-hmm. because he's just that good, checks literally every box you want. Yeah, and I think that's a total way. I, and Brian, I, I saw you shaking your head. You're not, you're not buying the the Corey Davis. He's still got something in the tank. <laughs> no, I I will not take any Corey Davis slander. He's still <laughs> somebody I'm holding out hope for. Him down oh here. no! <laughs> so, someday he will come to something. Oh, maybe we could trade him to Carolina for Curtis Samuel, and then uh, everything. Oh no! Don't oh get no! Don't do, that, don't do that! Don't do that! Don't bring up uh, Curtis Samuel already. Come on, let's uh, <laughs> wait. Let's wait on that one. Well, I think. Hey, look, Corey Davis is going to be a free agent this this uh, yeah. next year, so maybe you won't have long to ra- wait. He'll, he'll be uh, he'll be someone's number two receiver and be just fine. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, I'm really optimistic that they they do open the offense because uh, AJ Brown is worthy of the volume, uh, worthy of that elite wide receiver production. Um, and, and if it comes and Brian, he's that guy and he's getting 120 targets, um, you know, he's obviously going to pay off that ADP and then some, yeah, I, you know, I, I kind of agree with you guys with just the way, like just their style of offense is not predicated to producing a massive, massive return in production for a wide receiver, but his talent kind of overrides their, their scheme. And especially considering that like Delaney Walker's gone, like like Matt was saying, there's really no other guys on the outside that other than maybe Jonu Smith, which, you know, he's had flashes, but he hasn't been able to be consistent enough to prove that he's he's that number one option yet. But I mean, Tennessee is going to they're going to pound the rock again. And then once they get down in the red zone, we're going to see them run that play action game. And this is going to be A.J. AJ Brown down down in the red zone. And, you know, we're. He could be putting up double digit touchdowns, even with a similar target share of, you know, and only getting 90 to 100 targets. The, it, the one thing that does worry me with them is that last year they were bottom three in total plays yeah. for the season, because once they get ahead, they, you know, they don't feel the need to take yeah. any chances when you guy when you have a battering ram like Derrick Henry. So, you know, it if they're playing in a lot tighter games, which I kind of expect in that division with Indianapolis getting better, um, I think we could see his production actually increase. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes sense. And I also think I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that they learn from the Kansas city game and that you can't really put yourself in that tight of a box where if one or two things goes wrong and everything goes sideways, then you're pretty much got nothing else. 